Ryan, would you call the roll, please? Sure. Lance. Present. Uh, Jessica is absent. Uh, Mitch Goodset. Mitch. He's not here. Right. Bob Grody. Here. Bob Hyatt. Here. Mark Perry. Present. David. Here. <laughs> and I am here. Perfect. Any questions or comments, additions to the agenda? Okay. We'll approve the agenda. Yes. As, as um, what's his name? Without objection, we'll approve the agenda. <laughs> there you go. Um, public comment. And there's no one here. Anyone on anyone on anyone zoomed in? We have uh, three participants. Kathleen, uh, Pam, and Rob are here. But I don't see any zoom hands. Well, before they before they don't comment, <clears throat> I want to make sure that the residents who were quoted in our minutes have had a chance to read the minutes. Make sure they were quoted accurately. Ryan, I assume you use a um, transcription service, or do you? Uh, sure? No, I, I actually transcribed that by hand. I went back and I played the meeting at either half speed or three quarter speed through YouTube and uh, listened to comments. And if any of the comments are incorrect, I'm happy to amend them. Uh, I left even things that might grammatically on paper not look uh, correct as they were said as best as possible. That's why I thought it was transcription service. Yeah, no, no that was me. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I should use a transcription service next time. I suppose if, 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 if folks haven't had a chance. Uh, yeah, it, it's a great. Yes. Uh, there is an app out there. Just put your cell phone yeah. right by the speaker, play the YouTube, yep. and they'll transcribe it for you. Yep. Otter, Otter AI? I, I Otter, Otter AI does, does a good job. All I'm you gonna, have to do is I correct made, the spelling. I that. Yeah. Punctuation and... and um, Begin the sentence with a capital letter. Yeah. Anything else is done for you. Yeah. Perfect. Wow. So, don't uh, worry. Mitch is here, by oh. the way. Oh, okay. Mitch. Um, Rob Kettens has his hand up now. So. Okay. Go ahead. Proud to be here. Good. 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 They were. Yeah, they were, they were sent by email. By email. By email. Okay. We sent them out by email. We didn't okay. post them on the agenda. Okay. All right. I'm sorry about that. Look okay. at this. Well, <clears throat> we'll try to correct getting the minutes posted at least by Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. Um, but that's between you two, Ryan and Terry. Yep. Yeah. Um, we'll get that. Thanks. And I say I will get these posted uh, perhaps today. And if anybody who's quoted is misquoted, please let us know. Uh, I would suggest um, that they be sent out as a PDF also. Oh, absolutely. So can we just like table the approval till next week then, so people can look at it? Yeah, I guess we can. Yeah, all right. Yeah, good. Uh, wow. Well, can, 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 can we? We can, 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 can edit them, or you know, we can't correct them two meetings later, right? We have to do it the next meeting. We have to do it the next meeting. So we, unless, unless the minutes weren't ready, ready in which case, they were. So right now, yeah. Okay. Are we send it out right now. Posted now. Yeah. Can you um, send it to Christy? Uh, she should be able to get them posted. Yes. I've got it. Can we move the line to the end of the meeting that way? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would work. People on right. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So you're going to send them to Christy, Terry? I am. Yeah. And ask her to post it. Thank you. All right. We'll, um, without objection, we'll move adoption of, excuse me, um, approval of the minutes to number, I guess that would become number 10. Um, Slide it in between public comment and adjournment. Yep. And then determine which. So it would be number 11. Yep. Or 10 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> 10, <laughs> 10, yeah. 10. Oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So, folks who are listening, you should be able to see the minutes hopefully within the next 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, and if you just 
real quickly review your comments and let us know. Um, yep. And we'll move on to the communications or correspondence. We still have another, oh, another yep. comment, Pam. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, good morning, Pam Boyd, a SIRE resident. I just want to thank uh, Terry for her services uh, for running Zoom and uh, being a part of this group. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Any more public comment? That's it. Okay. Moving on, we move the approval of minutes to the end and communication and or correspondence. Do we have any communication and or correspondence? Not that I've seen. Okay. Um, all right. Presentations and discussion. Chief, it's your show. Excellent. So uh, after last meeting, uh, I worked on a worked on another little PowerPoint to help summarize a little better and add some deliverables in as this uh, group had requested. So uh, issues and options. This should uh, should be a quick presentation to get through. Um, issues uh, up on the wall there. I wrote out the issues uh, on. on piece of uh, paper here, and I also have them uh, in our presentation. So the issues to be addressed. Uh, one is meet to in, to out requirement. Uh, number two, achieve a response time goal of six minutes or less 90% of the time. Uh, issue three, add a training officer to administrative staff. Issue four, ISO rate reduction from a 610 uh, to a four or three uh, as best we can. Can you just expand on the 610? Yeah, so uh, any any area within Sio Township that's within five road miles of the station uh, is an ISO 6. Anything over five road miles oh, is a 10. Out of 10. Correct. Uh, there's one last qualifier. Uh, if there's homes that are between five and seven road miles from the station, but in a hydranted area, they're a 10 W. Chief, dry hydrants don't count, correct? Correct, they okay. do not. They don't, really? No, nope. you bring water with? Yep, that, that means uh, 10W, we've got water when we get there. Uh, standard 10 means we need to bring water out with us. Oh. Uh, ability to license uh, for basic life support transport and ability to license for advanced life support transport. And that's just a matter of training? Uh, it's a training and personnel. Yeah, so if we're an ALS transport, we've got to have sufficient number of paramedics. Mm -hmm. uh, for BLS, our guys are, are all BLS. Uh, they're trained to the level they need to be. There's a little bit more, a little bit more equipment too. Yeah, a little more equipment, yeah, a little more training. Yeah. But, but the biggest, my, my biggest concern there is that you know we're going to need, that, you know, because if I've got one paramedic per shift and that person takes off, uh, we can't reduce our licensure for a day generally. So. We need to have sufficient numbers of paramedics to make that happen. So let's talk current operations. Zebroad, uh, understaffed. Uh, we've got nine full-time equivalents in the emergency response staff. You'll see that ERS uh, throughout this presentation. Uh, three people scheduled, three people minimum per day, and we have three shifts. That's how we get our nine. Three shifts of three, and I schedule three every day. That means if uh, Lance takes off tomorrow or his next scheduled day for vacation, I'm filling that with overtime. That's making up, uh, make, made up of three captains, three lieutenants, and three firefighters. I have uh, right now five part-time firefighters. Uh, based on how they're scheduled and how many uh, shifts they work, they, they balance out to about a third of a full-time equivalent. Currently, I have 1.5 administrative staff, myself, full-time, Terry, half-time. Uh, fire prevention staff, one full-time, it's Assistant Chief uh, Fire Marshal Doug Armstrong. We're able to minimally staff one apparatus 60% of the time or the apparat one fire apparatus and the rescue 40% of the time. Current deliverables, uh, issue one, two in, two out. We meet at the Zebra Road station on about 35% of the time. Our six minute response time, this is year to date number, about 40%, just slightly under. Uh, we do not have a training officer position filled, uh, our ISO. I think uh, with some of the tweaks we've done, we could probably get to a five right now. Uh, 
our last uh, assessment, we had two people on duty. We now have three scheduled and four sometimes. Uh, that will help. So I think uh, we could probably get to a five out of, out of the 10 right now. We're not able to staff for BLS transport nor ALS transport. Basic question, Chief. Yes. Uh, you always say that your goal is six minutes of response. Correct. Is that an industry standard or is that, yes. is, does everybody use that? Everybody should. <laughs> and it's broken down into components, right? So we don't have any way to affect the time it takes for a 911 call taker to answer a call. So we look at metrics from when we get alerted to when we arrive on scene. Um, in a medical call, we have 60 seconds to get out the door and a four minute travel time. And in a fire call, we've got 90 seconds to get out the door and a four minute travel time. I average it and round it to six. That makes sense? Sure. As a follow-up question sort of to that, um, when we're looking at the ISO rating, do they rate that at the end of the year? Is there like a cadence to when they do that? A uh, 10 year cycle. So it's a 10 year cycle. Unless we request it earlier. Okay. Is there a cost to us to request it earlier? Nope. Hey. I will say, um, if we're gonna recommend some changes, we can get those in place. I'd like to see them in place for two years before we request that reevaluation. Sure. Which I think we'd be pushing near the 10. Uh, we were 10 year, right? 2018 or 19. So, yeah. And performance metrics for this, this uh, level of service. Um, uh, requires for any significant structure fire, requires four mutual aid companies. So that's a total of five companies. Also. Correct, yep. And you know that's two from Ann Arbor City, one from Dexter, and one from Ann Arbor Township right now. And then we had Chelsea and also to bring water in uh, two hydrants to, to areas with no hydrants. So uh, we can handle one medical at a time. We can handle one motor vehicle accident, but we're not fitting, meeting all the uh, critical goals we should. Uh, we're a little short staffed to handle one car accident. Uh, requires one to two mutual aid companies when we have a extrication call. That's where we have to use uh, jaws to cut somebody out of a vehicle. Uh, two to three mutual aid companies for tractor trailer fire, and we can handle one vehicle fire, but we're short one position on that as well. That's our ballpark cost for that, about two point two million or about one point three five million. Currently, correct. Yep, this is today. Mm -hmm. and Chief, what's the downside of having <clears throat> to wait or having to require or rely on extra mutual aid companies? What's the downside? Well, there, there's several. Uh, number one, the travel distance is the biggest. Well, of course. Right, our ladder truck's coming from downtown Ann Arbor. That's 15 minutes to get out here. Um, uh, Ann Arbor Township's coming from the northwest side of Ann Arbor. Or, I'm sorry, northeast side of Ann Arbor. So, you know, uh, yeah, yep. Fire grows exponentially. So the longer it takes to get there, the longer the more damage is going to be. And right on down the line. Um, so, looking at some of the options, and I rearrange these a little bit. Um, we'll, we'll oh, help. if you could just back up one slide. Yeah, uh, or one, I'm sorry, no, one more. Uh, down on the bottom, you have a cost of 2.2 million you know, with we equate to 1.35. You might want to check that number. Uh, if you just simply do simple math of uh, uh, multiple or, or dividing the, uh, the millage by the, by the, uh, the cost or the tax or whatever the revenue that comes out uh, to about 1.6 billion and we're only at 1.5 billion also um, the the actual number wouldn't be 1.35 would be 1.498 or 1.5 so okay. just check that number you may be using a uh, uh, an incorrect because um, you only can levy on real property you can't do it on the total tax base. Well, we were using for 20 is for this. This is actually a 2023 number coming up, right. <clears throat> and we were using 1.5. So there must be maybe I transposed the digit. So All right. I'll fix it. All right. Excellent. Okay. So options to bring us into uh, more compliant uh, response times and stuff, right? So option one, fully staff our zebra station. That's the simplest. We had a, a another person. So we have four people on duty daily, four per shift. That's 12 people in total over three shifts. Looks like uh, that comes out to be a captain, three, I'm sorry, 
three captains, three lieutenants, and six firefighters, or a captain, lieutenant, and two firefighters per shift. Uh, and that, that's the maximum capacity we have in that building. We can sleep four people in there. Uh, we add a training officer. Uh, that gives us a total of, and, and make our administrative assistant full-time. Uh, that, that gets us three full-time administrative staff. We add a half, uh, half full-time equivalent fire inspector, uh, assist or assist the chief uh, with his inspections, 1.5 prevention staff. That provides us the ability to staff both a fire apparatus and our rescue. Here's what our deliverables look like. Uh, we get up to about 90% of the time we're going to meet our two in, two out when we arrive on scene. Uh, still, uh, we're not uh, changing stations, uh, locations, so we're still going to meet our six minute response time about 40% of the time. Uh, that does get us our number three deliverable uh, of a training officer. I think our ISO is still about the same. Uh, we could get to a five, maybe a low five. Uh, we do have the capability of BLS transport, but no ALS transport. We'd still need uh, additional paramedics to do that. And our performance metrics don't change that much. Um, we still need four mutual aid companies to handle a structure fire. We can now handle a second medical ourselves. Um, but pretty much everything else remains the same. A little more money. Uh, I'll have to defer to... That's, that one's right. Okay. <laughs> That one's right in 2025. Okay. The reason why, the reason why, I think that first slide, we kind of breezed past that first slide. Anything we do, it's going to take at least two years before we can raise more money. Because it's going to take that long, I think, and Chief, correct me if I'm wrong, to convince the board, number one, and to convince the people, number two. Yeah, there's some... There's some logistics to get there, and uh, towards the end, we can talk about this as maybe as steps and how to get where we want to get, you know, kind of uh, help define where we should be at the end of this process and steps to get there. So, this is just operational. This isn't training. I mean, would training cost be on top of this? And does it amount to much? No, uh, this would include a training officer, uh, and that person would be uh, responsible for conducting the training. So, it'd be an in house project. There would probably be still some classes we send folks out to, but we do that today anyway, so it'd be net on net zero, basically. All right. Uh, here's where we get into talking about a second fire station. Uh, the next three options uh, re are re uh, require a second fire station to meet. Uh, we currently own 10 acres on Wagner, south of Liberty. Uh, the townships purchased that, uh, well, I believe, last year. Uh, typically, I think we'd be designed, built, equipped, and staffed in two to three years to get in that building, and that's going to be incremental uh, as we do so. I can't go out and hire enough people today to, to meet that, so there's going to be a process where, say, we hire six or nine people, we, we spend some time training them, we start staffing both stations, hire some more people, spend some time training them, and then build up to the staffing level that, that, that this committee may recommend. Uh, the cost to build a station, I'm ballparking seven to nine million. Um, I, I'm going to throw this quali uh, the qualifier in there. I'm a fire chief, not a construction manager. Um, and the second station, you know, we'd want to look to the future to potentially allow it to sleep nine, even if we're not going to do that. Uh, you know, you never know what might happen, and it's super cheap to build a couple extra dorms today. Uh, and uh, rather than find out you need them five years from now and not have them. Also could provide for a little better administrative offices, an overflow dorm, a three apparatus bay like we currently have would, would meet our needs, I think. So options, option two, sorry, I gotta move my Zoom thing here, it's blocking part of my screen. So option two is we staff two stations and staff for one additional fire apparatus, so that'd be one fire apparatus at each building. Uh, that's a total of 24 folks in uh, emergency response staff, uh, we'd have eight per shift, uh, but we'd be able to let one person be off before filling overtime. So we'd have seven on duty minimally every day. Uh, and they'd be divided over three shifts, uh, three BCs. That's simply a name change, something we'd have to negotiate. But once you go to two stations, that makes a little more sense to, to give it that title and authority. Uh, six lieutenants, because you'd need one lieutenant uh, staffing each of the uh, fire apparatus, and then 15 firefighters divided out amongst the stations. Administrative staff, 
uh, no additional changes. Prevention staff, no additional changes. And that looks like Zebra Road staffing one fire apparatus and a battalion chief. And then Wagner staffing one fire apparatus with three. If we've got everybody on duty, no one's off sick or on vacation, we could potentially staff the rescue, we'd staff the uh, fire apparatus with two and the uh, rescue with two. Question, does this include staffing up Z Road or just leaving Z the way it is? So this includes, this is on top of the, the first option. So okay, this so is kind of the next. Option one plus. Yes. Okay, thank you. It'd be nice to see a spreadsheet with each of the yeah, options. Yeah, but, but, but station one, station two. Yep, it would. Option one, option two, option three, yep. and, and just cost under an agent right. and see what the increment is. But, but okay. you've you answered the question. But if you had the spreadsheet, we wouldn't have to ask. Gotcha. Well, then you can evaluate. Yep. Yep. All right, so now, so now we look at uh, deliverables and performance, right? Uh, issue one, two in, two out. Zeb Road, we're going to meet 90% of the time. Uh, initially on arrival, Wagner, about 10% of the time. There's typically going to be probably 90% of the time one person off sick or vacation. Uh, meet our six minute response time uh, in the Zeep Road area uh, most of the time and Wagner Road most of the time. Uh, we, we go to probably our 90% compliance with this option. Uh, training officer, yes, uh, ISO rating. Potentially a four, maybe a three. You know, there's a, a lot of area that we now reach within that six minute response time, so our ISO rating is going to improve. Uh, still don't have the capability of doing BLS transport in this example, uh, nor ALS transport. Performance metrics get better now that we're staffing two fire apparatus. We only need three for mutually uh, companies for working structure fire. We can handle two medical calls simultaneously. We're adequately staffed to handle one MVA or one extrication, and we only need one mutual aid company for tractor trailer fire, and we got a vehicle fire covered uh, adequately. Uh, ballpark costs on the bottom there, uh, four and a half million, 2.7 mils. Ballpark. Or, so, so Go ahead, yeah. Mills, this is Mitch. Hey, um, hi. You said that the new station would cost between seven and nine million dollars. How is that? So how is that split into the cost that you have the four point four million? Do you just split that cost over several years? So typically, I think what we do is we bond for it or something like that. Um, so if we were to have, uh, and what what you see here is just operating. So it doesn't include okay. the cost for the building. So we t I think oh. we typically bond for it over a number of years. Um, okay. then, then there's two ways to think of it. You could do a traditional 20, or you could do a 10, which is the life of the approved levy. You know, you just got, we got to debate that. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I, <clears throat> just for everyone's understanding here, these numbers are my numbers, Chief's numbers. We'll need Mark to look at these because we've taken the um, today's taxable value and boosted it across the years based on things like heritage woods, Woodview, and tra the uh, trailway, you know, all these buildings, all these developments that are coming in that are gonna add to our base. And we may have added too much, we may have added too little. Um, so this is where you, you come in to put the magnifying glass on it. But ballpark, four and a half million dollars. Operational costs. Operational, yep. Well, and debt service, right? And this is just operation costs. Okay, just operate. Yep. Just operations. So but let me just ask a real question. If we had a seven and a half million dollar bond. Oh, never mind. I just answered my question. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, option three, uh, two stations, staff for two apparatus and a rescue. Um, that puts us at 33 folks and emergency response staff. Uh, 11 scheduled per day. Nine minimum. That means we'll let two people off either on vacation or sick before we uh, paid with over or started filling with overtime. And they're divided over three shifts, so you'd have eleven per shift. Uh, that looks like a total of three BCs, six lieutenants. That's one per fire apparatus, and then twenty-four firefighters divided divided amongst the station. Uh, three administrative staff. That hasn't changed. Two prevention staff. That hasn't changed. And what that looks like for. Uh, Vehicle positioning, Zeeb's going to staff one fire apparatus in the BC that gives us four there a day. Wagner staff one apparatus, 
and a rescue for total five there a day. That gives us some a little bit better deliverables. Uh, two in, two out, we're gonna meet at a Zeeb station pretty much 100% of the time, and about 90% of the time out of the Wagner station. There's gonna be some times where that rescue is out on a call without the fire apparatus. So they'd have to, they'd get a scene with just the three, waiting for the rescue to get there to back them up. Uh, six minute response time, we'll, we'll meet that in those areas 90% of the time. Uh, training officers included uh, ISO, uh, low four, potentially three here. This is uh, a bit better level of service. Uh, in this instance, or since we're staffing that rescue full time um, and hiring enough people, we'd be able to uh, license it for either BLS transport or ALS transport. Performance metrics, uh, that rescue uh, on a fire or scene is going to be assigned a function. So we're down to two mutual aid companies for a structure fire. Can handle three medical calls simultaneously. Can handle two motor vehicle accidents, one extrication, one tractor trailer fire, or two vehicle fires. And uh, cost, uh, again, there's an additional cost here for this. You know, uh, 5.7 ballpark, uh, three and a half mils roughly. Before you switch, <clears throat> The, the six minute uh, response, what's what's the means that you use in order to calculate that? Is like Google Maps or so, or is it runs you guys? So right now, right now what I do is I, I, I'm using last year's data. I've calculated the average response time to every square mile section of the township. Mm -hmm. And then calculated the time distance from Z Road Station to where Wagner Road Station may potentially be and reduced that from the areas we get to quicker. Okay. And it's primarily the southeast section of the township. And, and what's the formula that ISO uses? The same? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, ISO is unrelated to response times. Uh, uh, ISO relates to abilities of the fire department, deployment analysis, company staffing, uh, and about 10,000 other things. Okay, but so it doesn't count response time. Really? Baked into the 10 that our, one of our residents had down in Section 36, that was... Uh, based on miles only or actual travel time for us. actual travel okay. yes yep I used all actual travel time for us and I take that back uh, ISO does want your first apparatus there uh, with a four minute travel time hmm. so it does relate back to the, the six minute response time hmm. okay and there's there's road miles for engines and ladders and some other things as well so uh, any other questions on this one Then option four, uh, and this is the one uh, where I built my ideal fire station with what we have for fire department. It's oh. Disneyland. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if the township commits to option three and we get there, and I apply for a federal grant, we've got, mm -hmm. you know, and we can award a federal grant, we, we can fund some of those positions with federal money. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is two stations. We staff for three apparatus and the rescue. Uh, 45 total people would have 15 per shift. 12 on duty at a given time, divided over three shifts. Uh, administration staff stays the same, prevention staff, we had uh, this one we bump up to a full-time uh, fire inspector to assist the assistant chief fire marshal. Uh, Zeeb Road's gonna staff one fire apparatus, a fire apparatus and a BC. Wagner's gonna staff two apparatus and a rescue. <clears throat> There's a couple important notes I wanna talk to just briefly about this, right? We, we touched on capabilities of an engine versus a ladder truck and a tanker. Um, if we're in an area with hydrants, we don't have to worry about a tanker, so that's out of the equation. Traditionally, uh, and, and like our bigger cities and how the traditional fire service model is, an engine shows up, they pump the water, a ladder truck raises ladders, does searches, and gets the smoke out of the building. Most suburban departments, that ladder truck serves as an engine also, so they're gonna stretch hoses and stuff like that. In this model, we're, we're taking that ladder truck and making it a true ladder truck, where its primary purpose is to search for occupants, throw ladders up, get on the roof, open the building up and get smoke out. That lets the engine do their own job, uh, which it's more suited for. We can make a ladder truck do that. It has a few, few limitations, it's a little less maneuverable, it costs more, it carries a little less water and a little less tools. Less hoses. Yeah. yeah, a little less hose. It's a little less capable, um, but in an ideal situation, they would work together. Uh, in most suburban situations, they can be used for the most part interchangeably. 
And then anywhere that's rural, we need to have a water tanker or two or three as a support unit to keep water flowing on a seat. Uh, this situation, we'd have a minimum of four at our Z Road station, eight on duty at our Wagner station. Deliverables get a little better here. Uh, two in, two out. We're always going to meet out of both stations. Um, I, I mean, there's, I, I can't say always, there's always that unforeseen situation, but with virtual, almost never would we not meet two in, two out when we arrived on scene. Even if that rescue's out, we're still sending an engine and a ladder out of that station. What does the plus mean under Wagner? Just about to get to that. <laughs> so six minute response time. Um, uh, if we've got one fire apparatus at Wagner Road and it's out on a call, we're probably not going to meet that response time. If we've got the engine and the rescue, there's a better chance. If we've got an engine, a ladder, and a rescue, we can be out on a car accident or something severe and still meet our six minute response time because we probably still have one vehicle back. So that, that means we can handle two to three calls in that area uh, and still meet our six minute response time. And training officer stays the same. Uh, this one, I think we get another little ISO boost. We could probably be a three, maybe even a two. Uh, BLS and ALS transport, absolutely. Then we look at our metrics here. We're down to one mutual aid company necessary for structure fire. We can handle four simultaneous medicals, two car accidents. We can actually handle two extrications uh, simultaneously. One's gonna be a touch short handle tractor trailer fire on our own and two vehicle fires on our own. And again, it's our highest cost option, but you get most performance out of it too. Go ahead, Bob. Oh. Um, <clears throat> when you got, when, the, <clears throat> when you were out on a call, yep. does the 911 service know you're not in the house so they don't bother to Bring the alarm in Five Township to go to Ann Arbor or Dexter. My question is, how many times are you called out on two motor vehicle accidents? In the winter, quite often, um, and and we just say, all right, hold the next one for us. We'll bounce call to call to call. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes, uh, it's, it's relative frequency. We're we're on multiple calls. Yeah, two two to five times a month, maybe or more. Yeah, yeah. It's not um, infrequent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, gee, if this one works so well, why would we ever need a third station? Because I know that that's been considered. Sure. So, uh, future growth and number of calls in an area. You know, once you start, and we'll use the the southwest or the, the west side of the township as an example. Uh, if we have an explosion of growth over there and an explosion of calls, uh, the more calls you have in one area, the more it leads to saying, hey, we need a fire station here to service this area individually. So if our demographic shifts, uh, we get more population over in the southwest. And it's not even population, it's number of calls. I know, but you don't have calls if you don't have buildings. It's loosely, it is correlated generally, but yeah, so, so yeah. Uh, is this the is covered um, quite well by having the Wagner Road? I mean, is Wagner going to cover the Northeast? Wagner will. Uh, this look, uh, or let me answer your first question. Yes, I, this is subjective, totally. Uh, but I think once you got a, a section of the township, and I got it broken into thirds, once the section's doing a thousand calls a year, it probably deserves a fire station there. There's enough volume to support. Subjective. I, I don't have objective criteria to meet that. <coughs> well, that's three a day, right? Yeah. Three calls a day. Yeah. So question two. Um, from the location where we have the property on Wagner and the location we have our current fire station on Z, for us to get to Pratt and Wagner is exactly the same road miles. We're going to do it quicker from Wagner because we've got a mile and a half of dirt road to get down Pratt to get there. So <coughs> Wagner Road, yes, will cover everything on the uh, east side of the township all the way up to here on the road. So the follow-up question for you, something you said a few minutes ago, roughly how much of the township is covered by hydrants as a percentage? Roughly? Less than a third. Less than a third, okay. Yeah. yeah. Sur uh, surface area. <coughs> Population-wise, two-thirds, three-quarters. And Terry, remind us how many hydrants we have? Um, 
between seven fifty and eight hundred. Eight hundred. Okay. Thank right. <coughs> you, And growing. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions on this uh, this slide here? So here's some possible recommendations. Uh, uh, Chairman Reed and I sat down and talked, and and it, you know here's one possible recommendation that could come out of this committee. Uh, request four and a half mills November of 2024, right? That gives us a flexibility. This is not something we have to levy, uh, but simply say, uh, as we grow the service, we say next year, all right, we need to spend architectural money and some groundwork. So that's an extra $3 million, $2 million, or $1 million, whatever the number is. In year one, you know, we, we fully staff our Zebra station and start purchasing apparatus. Start put some money towards that. Start design build. Uh, year two potentially Wagner uh, has got shovels in the ground. Year three, it's going to be a year to probably two years to build a station. Uh, we can start equipping and staffing. Uh, so we can't hire the people until we got a place to put them. Um, so once we've got a projected finish date where we can move in, we back up about three to four months. Start hiring people. Start training those people. That station opens, we put some people in there and it's a limited open, right? It might only be two people on the engine until we get more people staff. And then continue to staff uh, and equip until we reach the goal that, that this this committee recommends and the citizens approve of. Yeah. I got a simple question. What's the base cost today versus each of these? What's the millage today? 1.35. 1.35. What, what is it? Oh, yeah. Revenue? No, no, no. I'm trying to, I'm trying to equate it to a household. About, uh, how much your taxable value is at 1.35 increase? There you go. With this light up? There you go. <laughs> so our, our average in the township is, what is that, about 187000 I, I highlighted that 250 because I thought that was our average. But <clears throat> talked with the assessor yesterday. Our average is 180. 3,000, 185, let's call it 185. And this is an important metric to look at too. Mm -hmm. What's it actually gonna cost someone? Because... And where's the other column that shows what our, our insurance is gonna go down? <laughs> <laughs> you can't count on You can't count on it, but it's a, it's a and it's marketable a marketable feature. And it's a lagging indicator. Yep. I agree. Right. So you got to be careful when you sell that. You can't oversell that. No, but you do need to use it, I think. So let me ask this question to you, Chief. So yep. as you said, with the, uh, I guess, best service act, people call it, the largest action from a staffing perspective, you start hiring roughly three to four months before you can call it the building, be ready to go. Yep. If we were to start from where we're at now, I guess more or less where we're at now, and get that staffing ramped up, how long would it take you over time to get up to that 30 to 33 firefighters? Do you think a year, year and a half? Uh, excluding any building? Um, yeah, just, just the staffing. It's over. probably two years, two years to get that many people hired, trained, and on board. Is it even possible to hire that many? The that, that's the other today. question I have is from like a realistic standpoint. I know it's difficult to hire almost anyone right now, but mm -hmm. let alone somebody that's a, a very specialized position requires so much training. Yeah, not today. So I'll say we use uh, we use a hiring consortium called Emco. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to emco.net, and uh, uh, anyone that's trained wants to become a firefighter. They they go in there. They take an entry level test. Uh, it's a nationally recognized, nationally certified valid test, uh, I get their rankings and we start reaching out and say, hey, um, are you interested in coming to work for SIO? And, you know, we, we, we want to hire to the, I don't know, three today. I'm going to interview uh, eight candidates and, you know, we're going to take the, the top three of those. We're going to take the top eight, interview them. We're going to rank them, take the top three candidates, uh, run them through a physical They've got to go through their psychological evaluation. Mm -hmm. Once they pass all those things, you know, they've still got, they're still working somewhere, so they've got to give notice. So there's time there. I've got to get them uniforms and gear. And then that just gets them in the door. 
I figure there's probably a full month of on-duty training with the shifts just to look at our equipment, understand how it works. And then I'm good with them coming on shift. And then we look at that process again. And also, uh, it, it's quite some time. What big of an area do you have? Uh, we've got people out of state that, have, that are on our list. For the most part, uh, Metro Detroit area from Port Huron to, uh, to Brighton. One guy from Kalamazoo right now on our, on our eligibility list. Hmm. So. Just, just, just to put it in perspective, option two is twice the amount of money is what we're paying now. Option three is three times, and option four is about three and a half times. So that's the way the homeowner is going to last way I look at it as a homeowner. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Without question. Keep that in mind as we look at these options. I have, absolutely. Uh, Bob, you'd asked, uh, well, alluded to something here, and I think I sent this out to everybody. <laughs> I had a, uh, there's some redactions in here because I told the gentleman I wouldn't use his data. Um, uh, this gentleman reached out to me. Uh, he lives on Oxford Circle, which is in Kensington Woods, southeast section of the township, uh, Hydrants area. Uh, and he, uh, he reached out because his insurance company said his fire protection class went from five to 10. And it uh, threw his, his uh, homeowner's insurance uh, three times increase. Um, and he, he just, hey, is this accurate? What's going on? <laughs> so I did some digging. And uh, uh, bottom line is that his insurance company was correct. In 2019, uh, the township did a reevaluation. Uh, within five road miles of the station were six. He was between five and seven road miles with hydrants. He's a 10W. And I apologize for giving him bad news. And then it occurred to me, I said, what's really the effect to you? And so I asked him that and they responded back and I asked him that question. I said, would you mind sharing me the costs? Just, I have been trying to figure this out. What's ISO really matter? And he says, yeah, no problem. Um, and, and he actually printed out uh, what it costs. So he was in 2019, he paid $509 for his homeowner's premium. In 2020, after the change, he's paying $1,393. So is that $800? Uh, almost nine. Go back to the... Uh, Not just the flag. What was his uh, evaluation, his own, own value? Uh, he's about two, 250000 Not just to the fire. His whole policy. Correct. Correct. Not all that is due to the fire. We don't know. I, I don't know. Well, yeah. Yeah, my policy went up too. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's probably a normal inflationary factor on yeah. there. But yeah. liability in there too, I'm Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You might so have. That, that was the one measurable that his insurance company gave him that changed uh, as they justify the rate increase. Mm -hmm. And you're right, there's there's more things that go into It's one that. example. Yeah. But it happens. Somebody asked that you get an actuary, actuary in here. Hmm. Talk. Sorry, insurance actually. Who who suggested it? Was it no? I one of the residents. It was Rock. One of the residents. Yes. Yes. So get somebody get somebody in who can speak to that. I don't know anybody to call. In. I've tried. I've, I've, I've tried looking for someone in the insurance industry to help with that. I have not built on them. Um, this particular case is a very good example. Um, you know, fortunately, I live within the radius that's required, and I got a fire plug in my corner. So I'm, uh, my rates, they're, they're, they're high, but not that high. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other thing is, is, I just did a quick Google on the, the street, and it was down section 36 down yeah. by the queue. So yeah. I mean, you're at the far reaches. Yeah. Right. Having said that background, what is... In this particular case, what is our agreement with um, Inner City? Uh, does the ISO, when they do this rating, this radius, do they say, okay, the firehouse down by Briarwood is within six miles? No, nope. it's the authority having jurisdiction. It could be across the street, and it won't matter. Okay. Because <laughs> it's not Sion Township. It won't get the problem. Right. Yep. Okay. Hmm. 
but they they come when we call for help. Okay. Um, and, and that that it has worked in reverse as well. Uh, there's a number of communities in Lodi Township or a number of neighborhoods in Lodi which are less than five road miles from our station, but are covered by Saline Area Fire Department. Saline? Correct. Wow. So, so those folks have reached out and said, hey, what the heck's going on here? I'm within, you know, I'm, I'm four miles from your station, yet they're telling me I'm more than five miles from a station. I said, well, yeah, because we don't provide protection for that area. <laughs> Insurance companies have asked me the same question too. And, and it's simply, yeah, sorry, that's Saline areas. They have a contract to provide fire protection there. Uh, if they call us, we'll go, but that's their jurisdiction. Yeah. This, the, the four options look like it's well planned out, well thought out. Um, a, a township like SIO is, is, you know, it, it's evolutionary, it's growing, it's dynamic. You know, we're going to have. Uh, we're going to have a stronger tax base 10 years from now than we do this year. Um, uh, you know, the, between planning and zoning, you know, I'm sure we'll get a lot of building permits to help on that tax base. And that's partially why Bob's here to help answer those questions. He's planning commission member. So um, having said that, option one, two, three, four, what was the thought process? Was it one was the baseline and then two is option one plus that that's plus the shabby. master increment. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Or fair line in the case of Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and then three is is one, two, and you know, and, and the rest that Mercury. And then four is <laughs> is is one, two, three, and yes. it, 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 and this is the cat. So or link. Um, so, so what I'll say. Um, so it, it, let me let me finish. Okay. All right. As you build those, um, you want to look to the future. Where are we going to be 20, 30 years from now? Because there won't be, I'm not saying there won't be land left, but certainly there won't be ideal locations to locate a firehouse. Correct. If we have to have a third. So do we have that in mind of, of okay, is one or two will get us where we need within five to 10 years? Well, three get us 15 and and four will get us and or can we just mix and match all of one two and three to come up with something to present to the voters in a year so, so what i'd say um the way the way i kind of looked at it is um I, I started with well we didn't quite have enough and, and i wasn't here when this knowledge was passed or anything like that we don't quite have enough to staff our current station so if that's the bare minimum we want to do and that's a voter's will. That's what we can do, but this is what it costs. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my analysis, um, former Chief Furch's analysis, and ESCI, Emergency Service Consulting International, uh, all recognize that, that there's a need at the southeast section of the township for a building. So using that assumption that we need to build a second building, uh, I looked at various ways to staff it to provide service. Uh, the first was, hey, we just put a piece of fire apparatus down there. Uh, the other dynamic that's working here is uh, our ambulance provider um, is seeing staffing issues as well. We're, we're getting longer delays in, in ambulances. And in fact, uh, over the weekend, uh, we actually had to transport a patient to the hospital in an unlicensed vehicle because we couldn't get an ambulance to the scene. Mm -hmm. So there's some consideration there that we might be taking up more of that load for the community um, and that's why uh, the uh, one of the recommendations has us uh, licensing our BLS ambulance for transport. We still work in conjunction with HVA. However, in those cases where they're extremely busy or they show up and say, oh, no, it's a minor injury. I've got another call. Can you guys take this? We could do that rather than, you know, we load a broken ankle into a, a paramedic ambulance to drive to the hospital while that heart attack across the street's going unanswered. So there's some of that in, in, in one of in these options as well. Um, I think a second station gets us, if we just staff the fire apparatus, it probably gets us three to five years. Uh, if we staff the fire apparatus and the rescue, we're probably good for the next 10. Uh, my guess is somewhere between 10 and 15 years from now, we'll want a station on the west side of the township. 
and, and I can't speak to the future, right? Um, you know, we've got a planning commissioner and a township board that said, this is what our development looks like today. 10 years from now, it's going to be a different board, different planning commission. What if they have different priorities? And now Jackson is all 12 story buildings. <laughs> That's a different situation altogether. I, I don't know if that, what that future holds, what that looks like, if it's true, if it could happen, I don't know. If that's the case, this plan is going to need some tweaking. I guess here, here's an interesting question, Chief. Maybe you know, maybe know off the top of your head. If you were to take 4,700 residential units, what is the average number of calls per residence per year? <laughs> because that, that then lets us say, okay, what if he's building 522 housing units? We can extrapolate that data. We know. Yeah, it is up for approval based off of some similar projects. Those have this type of call data. So I think that is absolutely important to think about because yeah. then you can sort of see where you're getting up in your call volume and when that station makes sense. It's not that straightforward. Okay. Um, based on what we currently have here, I figured an address calls 911 once every 10 years. Okay. Right. Uh, I did some comparison of data with Chelsea. Uh, they have a community called Chelsea Retirement Community. Mm -hmm. uh, my in-laws actually live there, uh, but CRC averages just over one call per unit per year. How many units? I can't remember off the top of my head, uh, 450 maybe. So uh, socioeconomic also plays a factor as well. Uh, generally lower socioeconomic status equates to higher numbers of calls. So, you know, silos uh, on the higher end, so that, that is, plays into the, the equation, but, you know, it's, it's not a math problem, it's a calculus problem. Mm -hmm. So, heritage, that's the Baker Marshall development, and that's a, is that a strictly senior? It's targeted senior. I mean, yes, but it's going to be independent living and assisted living. And what? Assisted. And do you know the total number of units? About 300. About 110 in, uh, in the main building and about 212 so uh, individual living units. So there's another call Three, per day. About 300 calls. Another call per day. Yeah. Okay. But right now we're still meeting our response time goals to that area from the Zeep station. Mm -hmm. And we're not over, that prediction won't put us over 1,000 in that area. So with that development, I think we're still okay. And then, just one more question about, and the development that I think is stalled now, maybe gone, on Parkland Plaza just north of Sio View. There was a building that was going to go in there for seniors, but no independent. I mean, this is uh, well-to-do seniors to move in there. It was after a year area on the planning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think they cleared the they cleared the property and then it stopped. 120 units. 120 units. They've uh, they've got a six month extension. Oh, that, that was approved last year. That, that, that was right. right. That's right. That was approved again. <laughs> third time. Okay. Yes. That's only 120. Correct. Okay. All right. Well, you know, uh, my father and my uh, father-in-law, they were in two separate. Uh, uh, senior residences homes and what we found is regardless of a fall or a cut or anything they always called for an ambulance okay even if it was minor so where i'm going with this is if if you're seeing a lot of calls at these kind of residences shouldn't there be some agreement that if it's a minor type issue and they want you to transport maybe they should pay for that kind because you know their, their protocol is not necessarily the protocol. Right. I, I can I can speak to CRC alone, um, but you know, my my in laws moved from the independent side into the the main building because their mobility decreased. Um, CRC would not send anyone to pick them up if they felt um, their protocol was you have to call nine one one for service. Wow. They don't have staff trained to do that. So, uh, okay, but, but then we <laughs> as a township maybe ought to negotiate with them because they're a business. Yeah, absolutely. And say, okay, if it's something minor, not a heart attack, not a stroke, or, you know, and you have a uh, coding, yep. then maybe they should pay some kind of fee for that. Well, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> well, actually, I've been thinking that the insurance companies should, I mean, they pay for the ambulance 
service, do they pay you for it? No. The, so why don't we build the insurance? We can't. The only thing we, we can build for is a transport. Hmm? The only thing we can build for is a transport. Because of your licensing? Uh, because of licensing, Medicare requirements, Medicare rules, uh, all those other things. So but something I actually recognized back when I was looking through uh, standards that Carlisle Wartman looks at for all the projects, right? One of the things that it talks about is, I forget the exact verbiage on the document, but something to the effect of, will this development or project put an undue burden or something on public services? Normally, what it's talking about is the water and sewer system, yep. which is important. Don't get me wrong. And traffic. And traffic. Yep. I, I would strongly urge the planning commission, I realize it's not necessarily our job here, but if something is going to generate three to 400 calls per year to our emergency services, there needs to be consideration of that. We do take that into account and we do ask for um, donations to the uh, fire yeah, department structure. Yeah. It doesn't always happen. I mean, it's only a recommendation to it has to go through. I would also ultimately think about, and I know this is within the PUD ordinance, which is up for uh, discussion and review, as well as it's within JROD to an extent, um, as far as the community or public benefit, if we look at what we can do, be it a per square foot by building type, or there, there's some way of making it reasonable, while still, instead of having yet another park bench or uh, a statue that doesn't provide it, it's nice, but would it be much better if we could help staff a position at the fire department or make sure that we have adequate equipment in order to you know, meet these pathways that we're building and everything else? I know it's really not necessarily under our charge, but I know the planning commission could potentially review those things and look at it and then ultimately bring it back to the board, which would help our case. Absolutely on target. Still up to the trustees. <laughs> I know, it's really up to the To follow up on Bob's point, my father also was in an independent living, no advanced care, nothing, totally independent. He fell, he and I were out walking, he fell. I immediately, like a good son, immediately reached out, picked him up, and we continued walking. I got help for that. I was told by the, the administration that I should have called for help. He could have gotten a fractured skull, he could have injured his spine, he could have twisted his ankle, and by me getting him up, I could have worsened that. So I don't know if that's a, a, an insurance thing or if that's that particular um, uh, institution's Absolutely. rule or what, but um, after they yelled at me, I realized, oh yeah, I, I, I might have done something to his spine if he had twisted his spine when he fell, who knows? So. I'm just saying that's one example. So I'm sure it probably makes down the whole CYA kind of thing, you know, cover your behind. Oh, and yeah. That, right. So that way, if they don't call us, something happens to your in laws, parents, you find out, well, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to, you know, you can right. neglect, so on and so forth. So that's probably where it falls. Oh, well, we called. Yeah. You know, we passed the assessment off, is probably where it definitely um, comes to. So. Got to weigh it. Yeah. Right. So, so the way I see this pretty forward, if we look at the, the uh, notepad or the, uh, the the pad I got up there, you, you know, it's incremental steps. Bottom line is we got to figure out where, where do we want to be. I really like the position of whatever we decide, whether it's two, three, or four. I mean, if it's one, it's, it's understood that's where we're going to ask the the uh, voters to vote on, the, the residents to vote on. But if it's two, three, or four, there's going to be a top level and then an incremental over the years. I mean, you used example, you used option four as the example of, yep. of, of step stepping in. I like that pattern. No matter where we end up targeting. And it will be, yeah. It's it's incremental steps, no matter where. If if this committee says two or three is our level, that's where we want to be. You know, we start. All right, this millage passed. Now we're going to get to level one. While we start building a station, now we're going to hire some more people. And now we're, you know, it's it's a progression. 
you know, the, the, the higher level you want to get to, the longer it's going to take. And this was just one recommendation. We can, <clears throat> we can come up with others. Um, one thing that you've talked about here is that this is only going to last, I mean, this will cover us our needs for up to 10, 15 years if we go all the way to option four, say 15 years. And as we approach that, we're going to be able to, re we're going to, be able to evaluate um, whether we need to have a third station or not. And, um, but it's really two stations, is it not? Are we not talking about moving? Eliminating zero potentially, it's going to have a life expectancy too. But at, you know, it's still twenty years out, I think. Yeah, it, it, so that's a ways out, but still, okay. So we could do it at a third, and then see about another five, ten year period before we add, potentially add the or move the zero. Oh, and, and and something that we haven't, you know, I just briefly alluded to today. If the planning commission and the board decides Jackson should be high rises up and down there. Yeah, we're probably going to rebuild this station and add another one. It's not just the planning commission and the board. It's the resident. Correct. Mm -hmm. That takes yes. five years yes. to change the yep. plan. I'm not saying we wouldn't change the plan in the meantime, but... Right. Oh, the master plan. The master plan right. goes every five years, roughly. Right. And I don't think we're going to go out and ask the residents if they want. You know, four or five story I, buildings. I don't so, disagree. Right, <laughs> right. But yes, it could change. Correct. Right. Um, as I was looking at one, two, three, four, and to take off at this point on, on future needs, none of the options have a line item for purchasing just the dirt for the third station. Right. I'm not saying dirt's cheap, but it's no, cheaper no, today no, than no. it will be yeah. as development comes in and we get closed out on, you need what, four or five, six acres? I, two to three. Okay, uh, so uh, I, would, I would think it'd be prudent to add dirt, just dirt, and buy it and hold it, just land bank. I, uh, I agree completely. And because uh, you paid what two twenty two hundred twenty thousand on Wagner, and, and that seemed like a reasonable number. Um, and and I and as you go to the northeast or the southwest, it it may be a variable plus or minus of the two twenty. So uh, I would I would consider that. And Mark, along that line, um, you say two to three acres. You also said we have ten acres available and I'm going to suggest that we could land bank it but also be using it a part of it as a park and we could be using other sources of income to make the initial purchase put a park or a preserve I mean we don't have to use the whole thing for the fire station sure and mm -hmm. not pay for it but assist in the payment of it mm -hmm. But we need to be planning that. I mean, LBC well, comes into this. Uh, that's a fair point. If you had a six acre piece that, that would work and the township purchased it and said, here, this three, we're just going to leave vacant because we're going to put a fire station here in seven years or 10 years. And then the other three is now uh, an area for for natural growth or whatever. Sure. Yeah, I, I've talked to the chief about this, but I'd like to have a discussion, not in this group, but to have a discussion about the uh, back half of the Wagner property, perhaps becoming a, a ball field or a park mm -hmm. of some sort and tie into the new development that's um, probably going to come in at the corner of Liberty and, and Wagner and let them access it and, and give access to along Liberty because they're going to put in some, some sidewalks into Saginaw Woods, for instance, or toward there. So, have a park there, but that wasn't what drove that purchase, but it, it could have. And then now the fire station can be put in the front part. Yeah. So, so I think part, part of the reason that that was a 10 acre purchase is there was some consideration for potential future uh, utility infrastructure back there. 
as well. Yeah, you need water and storage. You're gonna so it isn't all available, I know, but still. Yeah, absolutely. And part of it was, you know, hey, we do what we need to do, and then the remainder that's not used goes back into that conservation and now it becomes farmland again. So it, yeah, tons of options. I was gonna say it that at least at some point, part of that property was conservation easement, correct? The majority uh, okay. was 110 acre piece, 115 acre piece. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, yeah, and the rest is okay. conservation easement. That's easement. what I thought. Yeah. Um, I guess a question for you, Mark, because you probably know this better than I do. Um, obviously, as, as you mentioned, we have to find a way to pay for not only the dirt, but also uh, the construction costs, because that's not covered under uh, these projections. Um, we can bond for it, um, but if we bond over 20 years, I just did this as simple interest loan. It's probably like what, for like 7%, which is where I'm ballparking, I'd probably make $480,000 a year as to be added on for principal and interest at $9 million over 20 yeah, years. It, it's going to depend on how you structure the bond. You know, you can't have principal and interest. Or you can also do um, uh, interest only with a balloon at the back end. I mean, there's 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 all kinds ways of ways to do it. To do it. Um, yeah, and if you're assuming, say, seven or nine, whatever whatever the yeah, capital nine. request is at four percent, yeah, it's going to be somewhere between uh, six and seven hundred thousand. Uh, Over ten years or twenty? Ten. 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 Yeah, and I and here's another discussion, and it may not be part of the option one through four. Is is that do you have your O and M operating and maintenance um, in your one point three five or whatever your baseline levy is, and then you break out the capital investment as a separate um, bond, so you have two bonds. Two millages? Yeah, two millages. millages. One is one is debt, pure debt retirement. Oh, no, uh, and, and, and and your debt retirement on, on capital only is gonna be flatline revenue, uh, flatline um, uh, P and I. They're gonna be just straight lines, you know. And then of course your uh, your remaining balance is gonna be a downward projection. Right. All right. And on the operating side, you're gonna see you're going to see if you have just an operating millage, you're going to have um, expenses pretty much a flat line other than consumer price index, CPI bumps, inflationary bumps. It's going to go up slightly two, three, five percent a year. But your uh, your debt, remaining debt is going to be a downward trajectory. And what would be the other component of it? Uh, you know, your interest expense is going to be going down and your uh, equity or your principles are going to be going up. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's the way I look at these things. So uh, I don't know if that answers your question. You do it one millage or two, about six, seven hundred thousand a year in yeah, capital. Yeah, that makes, that makes that's more if, sense. That's, that's if you had just a bond for debt. But your o and M, I I mean, that Debt on, on bricks and mortars, I mean, that's pretty level. I mean, it's not going to change much. No. But it's your o and M. That's the uncertainty of the whole thing, uh, particularly on the O side of things. Uh, your largest cost component is labor. Yep. And and I don't know how long your contracts are for, but, I mean, that could be like this, or it could be you know somewhat on an upward trajectory of 2 3 4% a year or whatever. I, I don't know, but... That's your unknown variable. And, um, and, and once you have a plan in place with all these forecasts, you can't change the plan because then it changes the whole financial structure. And I think that probably might be one of the problems that we may be in today. I, I don't know. I wasn't part of those discussions, but you know, the, the 2020 or back in 2016 when we first looked at this, it was a bond. And then yeah. it changed to something else. Yeah. Can we also, in theory at least, could you also take the uh, million and a half debt that's currently basically a loan from the general fund and roll it into this bond to extinguish all, all the debt through the bond? Or is there 
Uh, once again, and not ask you as a, a legal I'm, I'm not from the practical answer that simply because I have no history whatsoever on what FAS 1.5 is. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't know what it is. Um, but uh, I do know it, it, at 1.35, the forecast back 2018 or 2019, whenever we did this, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it started showing red in the reserve like mid midstream or maybe two years or into it and, and it was just because all of the variables changed i mean labor changed uh the the amount of the you know the capex on, on bricks and mortar changed. i mean there's a lot of things that just change and, and it just skews the whole model so you know it, it you know whatever whatever we come up with here in terms of the unknowns uh, you know, we, we need to make sure that we got a firm grasp on these unknowns and we forecast it for it um, so that we don't have this problem. And, 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 and I can tell you when you're forecasting it, the biggest, the biggest thing you have to look at other than, you know, uh, O&M is um, the millage rate that you start with, whatever you do, voters approve. Is, is, is it going to be sufficient to create, to throw off excess cash so that the reserve can accumulate? So you can have accrued um, um, excess funds to get you over these humps that you you can't plan for. Mm -hmm. You just can't plan for. Engine mm -hmm. breaks down, whatever. Yeah. Is there any rule, municipal government financing rule about how much we can keep in reserve? You know, I don't know the answer to that. You know, I know the township has a policy. I don't know what it is, but, you know, a, a fund reserve and how you can use fund reserves and things like that. And I think that, you know, you, you might want to start there. Um, I don't recall anything in, uh, uh, what is it, Public Act 33. I, I don't think there's anything in there. The only, on, on the financial limitation piece of it, your, your fire debt can't be any more than, 10 times something. I can't remember what it was. Uh, <laughs> Maybe 10 times TV? No, or, or <laughs> might it be 10% of something. And I, I can't remember what that something was. Okay. I mean, it's a 30 page act. You know? <laughs> yeah. <It's> 10 something. <laughs> so, okay. go ahead. Just some questions, right? I mean, does this committee see that there's a need for a second station? I mean, that that's a simple one we can answer. Do the, does, the, does the run data and everything show that we should have a second building? Because that helps narrow us down, right? Because right now we're sitting there looking at four different options. Well, one, one metric might help, if I may. How many runs today are we making over six? Do you know? Yeah. Or how many runs are we making to the 10, to the 10 areas? There would be the three extremes of the If it's 5%, that's one thing. If it's 50%, that's something else. So it would take about two years anyway to get a second building. Yeah. Yeah. So the data's going to change. It's going to take a while to convince the board to yeah. move forward with that. And it's going to take him and his these guys and yeah. maybe some of us to meet with the residences. Sure. And, and the residents. Planning wise. We're planning more development. Oh yeah. Oh, so, so is it? In terms of, <laughs> the numbers are I know. I've been through so many meetings well, with you. It's in basically a slam dunk that we're going to need a second station I with the plan development, especially if we're talking a couple of years out. Anyway. Right. Right. Does anyone view it as we don't need a second station? That would be a better question. Yeah. I'm trying to mull my mind. Maybe not today. I don't need it, but certainly it's going to take me two years to get it in. Anyway, well, two, two years, years to get funding. Maybe another year to yeah, two so years to get funding, and then depending on, especially if you get, let's say you get the funding approved in November of 24. Oh, I get it. And, and if you're telling me the Atlantic Commission is saying we're going to see further development. Yep. yep. And, and more I think population, et cetera, et cetera. And the first thing that will happen is that you're going to staff up and see you grow. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I got up here for you, right? Um, One question before you do that. Bob. Do you think it's unreasonable to, to, to say that we can't even start this for, for two years? I mean, I have I have said we're going to need a, a year to to or almost two years to convince the residents that we need to do this because it's a big jump. And so, is that unreasonable? Do you think? What are you asking? 
When would you the think? The two years well, we, from now to the time we can actually put the millage on the ballot, I'm saying is two years. Is that too far in advance? I think it's too no, far. I think it's too far out. Yeah, I do too. I, I think that's like next that, year. Yeah. The, 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 November the latest. Next November of 23? 20. Yeah. 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 So a year from now. Yeah. It should be on the ballot then. And I think the trustees are ready to act on it. And that's why well, that, that makes their work. Why? No, I'm just. There's, there's an issue of trust in this township. And we have to trust the fire department. We have to trust the board that they will go, go 1.6, 2.0, 2.5. They won't go the 4.5 from day one. We have to, we have to convince them that, that they can trust us. And part of that trust. Ryan just brought up the the uh, residents that have voiced concern have voiced it on the side of you are bankrupting the fire department in order to ask for a millage to cover it. And so there's actually been accusations level mm -hmm. and it's been on the side of supporting the fire department is almost a certainty mm -hmm. and so therefore you're already pulling money out to do this now i'm not saying that's what's been done i'm mm -hmm. saying that's the accusation that's the yeah. so um, ryan brought it up well i think that's great if we can do if we think as a group we think we can do this next year i think that's that's tremendous because i was being a little more pessimistic perhaps i i also think if we could there's always ways around things unfortunately but sometimes if we put it into this is what we recommended, we recommend you somehow stick to it or have something that, that is a little bit more restricted where instead of just saying, oh, we're gonna go from zero to 4.5 immediately and then, you know, not do what, what everybody else was on board with, what we understood the approach was to phase in based on what the need is and also where the costs are. Mm -hmm. I think that would be most helpful because we don't want people to come in saying, oh, well, you said this was going to be zero, that was going to be this, and then it was going to be this, and then we were going to get to 4.5 this year. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, we're from zero to 4.5, well, we're unhappy, which I can understand. Uh, anybody that would understand one thing and a different thing happens, they're going to be unhappy. To your point, I'm wondering if it's legal. I don't know, Mark, if anybody <laughs> can weigh in on this, if we could actually make the ballot language say, year one, it'll be one six. Mm -hmm. In year two, it will be no more than two. In year three, it will be no more than, you know, that type of thing. To build out to maybe year seven, <coughs> no more than 4.5. You know, and actually build that into the, to the so that means that in if year two, it says it will be no more than 2.0, 2 but if the chief doesn't need it, we'll leave it at 1.6. And if in year three, it says it no more than 2.5 and he needs 2.5, we can go to, from 1.6 to 2. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Is that legal to do? I don't, I don't know the answer. Okay. But certainly the, 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 the statute doesn't uh, say it says a fixed rate for a term approved by the voters. Yeah, but I don't know if there's an AG opinion or a court of appeals case on it. I, I don't know. I, so we have nobody's to ask ever you. asked me that. I okay. do know at least when there was discussion during the board meeting, not yesterday's board meeting, but the board meeting before that, that there is a resolution in a public hearing that's required every year to uh, authorize the right. fire department's funding. And there was a brief discussion, I believe, between Clerk Flintoff and somebody else. I remember who off the top of my head, but it was something to the effect of we can have up to this amount. Right. It is, in theory, possible to say we want less. Right. Um, but, and, yeah, if, if you know that's the case, obviously we should. Well, my, uh, yeah, request that's, just our needs. That's the point. If, if we <clears throat> ask for a single number, 4.5, um, we can always gradually get there. But to give the residents the assurance that we won't get there too quickly if we build in the escalator clause in the ballot language itself. Right. And I don't know if, that, like that. if that's even advisable from the chief's point of view or legal from it's the chief's point of view. Legal. You know, like I said, you know, the voters will prove a ceiling, mm -hmm. and then you have uh, a not, and that's a not to exceed. So that is a fixed number, mm -hmm. but you can always levy less. Right. But again, I, I've never heard of an escalator, an automatic escalator, or at least a contemplated one. Right. Um, uh, I, I, 
That's like trying to tie it. That, you got to get this sold to the Board of Trustees before they would put it on the ballot. That's tying your hands. I'm not sure that would sail through there. Tie his hands to it. Well, we, we can yes, research the question and come back next week. Yeah, it might, it might make it too complicated. Is the four or five based on the current population and development, yes. or does it include the future? I have built in some escalation. Some escalation. Well, the three developments I know of, and I mean, and, and it's for really, I'm going to ask Mark to fine tune it. Because potentially, it can be less than four or five if we have more development. Sure, right? absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. If the if the value goes up, we don't need four or five. We could yeah. go with four. Yeah. Sure, the predictions are right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. When you're when, when you're building your model, your forecasting model, uh, obviously you're using the, the total known tax base today, and the unknown variable in this case is new construction. Mm -hmm. Also, the unknown variable is loss. Mm -hmm. What losses do you have year over year? Mm -hmm. So those are the variables to look at. But within the tax base. You also have to look at, it's not just residential that makes up the tax base. You've got Aggies, you've got commercial, you've got industrial. Um, uh, those are the primary classes where there's a lot of dynamics going in. Our residential grows at a faster rate than our commercial industrial. But keep in mind, the other taxpayers or pro <coughs> property owners in this equation that we haven't really included in the discussion is commercial and industrial. And they they'll add a big a big number to the taxable value as well as to the uh, the tax revenue side of whatever it is one point three five or four or whatever the number is. So you know there, there's other things we got to look at and you know I, I'm not saying that commercial and industrial are, are higher consumers of your services, but they they do some. Um, but uh, I, I don't know if those are in your projections. Uh, so as a business yeah. owner, you probably have value in a more. Uh, well, we well we don't generally consume a lot of fire service at the moment, which is a positive thing. I think for all people, all parties involved, there's definitely a benefit to it. Uh, you have to remember that uh, there is actually a lot of commercial development going on. There is. Uh, Rand is building uh, more commercial, low-rise industrial out on West Jackson. Um, I'm building my building. Uh, the people that are next to the truck wash, I know there's a car wash of some sort. Of deal going in. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not sure what else fans know, Brian. Well, you, you've got the uh, cricket ball or water. What, what do you uh, pickleball. Oh, pickle uh, yeah. Christy, yeah, they're building that just down the street. And the, there'll be a call today. <laughs> No, okay. <laughs> well, actually, we're not there that often. They're, they're operating off of uh, Jackson Industrial. Right. Yeah. And we're not there that often. We go there occasionally for an angle or something. But yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I right. there, there is a lot of commercial and, and less industrial, but still a lot of commercial development that's going on. There's going to be commercial frontage in that medical office building as part of Woodview, which the medical office building may have more calls because of the nature of it being a medical doctor's office of some sort. And just is going to have more calls than maybe people in their 40s and 50s that are living in uh, these townhouses, condos, whatever they are behind, behind that complex. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, those buildings are assessed at a higher average value because they're worth more and cost more. Um, so there definitely is some benefit to that. There is less of them compared to housing units, so you have to consider that. But I mean, you look at something when we were looking at the cost structure, my personal building cost is going to be up. <laughs> considerably higher than, uh, for example, maybe your home. Uh, but I look at it and there's a, an extreme value to that because if that building burns down, it will not only really cost more money to rebuild, which will be paid for by insurance, but it'll it take as, time. As you said, we were trying to pass the, the swim school and Debellas and that whole area of the city in Arbor. They probably aren't going to be back in there until maybe sometime next this time next year. I was just, just over to REI uh, over the weekend to pick up a pair of shoes, and you know they've got a facade on the front of it again. So I mean, and that was as you spring, wow. early spring, in your own experience. Yeah, it's taking you a while. Absolutely. Yeah. If if I may, um, can we bring it back to seven A presentation of opinions and recommendations to the chief? Recommendations. What the, focusing on that. 
what specifically do you want from us? Because I, I, in my mind, you know, as I try to wrap my mind around the finance piece of it, uh, I need some direction on what you expect uh, so, so deliverable to you. So uh, it's really for this committee to make a deliverable to the board. And, and I think it starts with saying, picking where's our appropriate level of service, mm -hmm. right? Do, do we think we're good today? We don't need to do anything. Um, so far, I've heard from some comments in this committee, yeah, we probably should have a second station. That's an important deliverable. If we decide we want a second station, the next deliverable is how many people do we put in it and how do we staff it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So those, are, those I see are core, right? Almost to the Board of Trustees' point, do we almost want to do a straw poll between the four options to see where, where we are and say which of these four oh. mm -hmm. which of these four do we like the best and look at the, the top two and say, okay, this is what we should, should we focus have. on. And we can obviously even tweak them from within there, but that gives us something to narrow in on so we can come back to it. I happen to have over here. <laughs> with, with the... Um, with the observation that no matter which option we choose, we won't get there on day one. Absolutely. It'll be phased in. Right. And even if we went all the way to recommending option four, it wouldn't we wouldn't get there. Not only wouldn't we get there right away, but we we might find we don't need it. Right. And we might never achieve in the ten years of its life. That's right. Exactly. Potentially. So, so does so here's the easy question. Um just show of hands, who thinks we need a second part? It's not it's not a matter of if, it's just when. Yes. It, it, that's, that's the way you got to think about it. Okay. Who, who thinks we need it today? Within five years? Yeah. Okay. If that's the ramp up to Dave's time. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and quite honestly, if we start planning today, it's three to five to have it up and running, right? Right. Okay. Who, who thinks we need this option to start working towards that today? That's a ten to fifteen year um, goal. Okay. Well, I've got I've actually got two hands up. Uh, oh, yeah. Four. Three. Three. Four. Okay. Bob, you want to? Okay. Mm -hmm. And who thinks we need to start planning for this today? That's for nine me with that. So we've got uh, uh, one fire apparatus and a rescue at our, at our Wagner station. Or, or who thinks we just we want to look at fire apparatus and fire apparatus and let's go. Oh, yeah, throw me in there. I would be I would be down with four actually. Well, if 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 we're all if those of us who voted for four, I think also vote for. Two and five yeah, years, three, three and four years. Two, three, and four. But that's the key, is that if I'm saying four, we're not gonna we're gonna get we're gonna run right on through the other. Yeah, we're this is step right on through the other. Five to seven years out, this is where we're gonna be, right? Yeah. If, if that's what we're shooting for, this might be next year, this might be three four years from years. now, four or five, you know. Seven. Yeah. 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 And if we are planning that far in advance, we're not doing our job. Okay. Five years or 15. Okay. You know, in 10 years, we'll have a really nice setup with two stations. A really nice setup. You know, but it's going to take 10 years to get there from the staffing point of view and from the equipment point of view. I don't disagree with it. Well, I think the goal, too, is not to be in the position we're in right now. Two. Exactly. 10, 15 years down the road. Get out of the hole. Yeah, because I mean, you look at the studies, we should have had a second station in 2018, 19, something like that, from multiple, from Chief First doing it, from $30,000 yes, yeah. that a grant was that the township paid to have it done. So I think the big thing is to project the next 10, 15 years. I know it's difficult, obviously, but to I'm not. Hearing all the, um, all the, uh, personnel issues in, in getting them on board, finding them, getting them on board, getting, getting them trained. If you don't have the station for it, you can never even look to hire them. And it's going to take a while to get them. And one more, one more variable. <clears throat> How many of your guys will retire in the next five years? Two. 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 Eligible. Two are going to be eligible. And then not so the beginning, beginning, beginning of 2024. Mm -hmm. Enough too, and then what's uh after that? Where are we at for lieutenants? 
until they, after that, you have like a good 10, 15 year break until people can go. Oh, okay. So that's not too bad. So I think. Well, I did the back. Sorry. I think there's one firefighter that could go to sort of where he's at for <laughs> age wise. Age What's that? They transfer. They get another job. I'm quite honestly, I might want a Powerball too. So you guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Is that, is that, uh, don't, count, don't hold your breath on that one. But. Okay. So. But, the way I think about this is, 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 as I mentioned earlier in the discussion, you have option one. Two is option one plus, plus. Mm-hmm. that little margin. Yep. And then three is one, two, and three Walmart. plus a little bit more margin. And four is your longer term mm-hmm. goal that includes one, two, and three. So to get us, um, to get us uh, up to a minimum of par, maybe par minus one, we need one. Just, there's no question about mm-hmm. it. And then two gets us where, in, in the direction of an early long-term plan of where we want to be in the short term, and then three and then four. So I would I would rank it that way. Um, I, I like all three proposals because I think that you can make a solid management argument on, on one, two, three, and four, but over a gradual year uh, period of time. And, and, you know, what is that gradual period to get to four? You know, is it 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years? I mean, but I think they have to build on the other. Mm-hmm. And then that also builds on the confidence of the mm-hmm. taxpayer or the homeowner or, or the tax base. I mean, th- that's the way I think, I guess. So, so how, how can we illustrate that? So that when we come back here in a week, it's in a document form to say, "Hey." Well, well, I'm, I let me let me interrupt you, please. Can you restate? Are, are you are you proposing that option four is what we should shoot for in a graduated over a five to seven year period? Yeah, pick pick the period. You know, yeah. five, ten, fifteen. You no know, whatever period. whatever one makes sense for the homeowner or, or the, the, uh, the taxpayer. And two, from an operational standpoint, what makes sense for um, Canyon Lands? Because, um, you know, they need to uh, rep- make a representation, one, it's a good plan, and two, it brings us up to the level of safety and security that we need where we're deficient today. Mm-hmm. I mean, and we are deficient, I, I believe, because I don't know your business that well. Um, uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but one thing that, that Bob said earlier it, at, the, at the very top of the presentation is, is that you'd like to see a form of a matrix. Mm-hmm. Okay, where's the, ex- you know, I'm thinking of a spreadsheet now. You've got your current, um, expenses, your 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 O and M and and potentially capital, and then you have Firehouse One. What would be the costs associated with Firehouse One? And then in option two, we're going to have to add that that second column. Okay, what is the Absolutely. incremental um, and cost or you know cost and benefit? And, and, and so that so that you have. Lump sum, you have, okay, what is, uh, uh, under option one, two, three, four, what is um, firehouse one cost, two, what are your incremental costs, and then from there you can start developing your millage rates, and, and so that there's complete transparency in this whole thing with with the voters, and I think that's the important piece. Yes. Just to work quick here. Yeah. Once we fully staff the, for all intents and purposes, other than inflation, does the Cost of seeds remain constant. Pretty much, yeah. So it's Wagner or the station two that will incrementally. Okay. Yeah. Right. And, then, and then you can use your, I'm thinking you can use your inflationary index on both mm-hmm. one and, you know, how firehouse one, firehouse two. Because mm-hmm. uh, those will be pretty much parallel. I mean, the cost up here is no different than the cost down there, right. other than people. Other than people. Uh, you know, hardware is hardware. Right. Right. Um, two things just real quick. Have you 
have used the department extended job offers and then had any candidates reject them over the last several years and stated a reason why out of curiosity? So I've hired no full-time people in the last, uh, since I've been here. Okay. Um, paid on call uh, when I started or part-time when I started here was seven to 10. We're, we're about half that now. All right. Yeah. And, and also all right, main, mainly when we hired full-time, it came from the paid on call ranks. We never hired outside. It always came from inside because hey, you had you had enough people. So the three we hired in 2019 were all paid on call employees. Mm -hmm. So to say, has anyone ever gotten an offer and they rejected it from outside? Probably not. I don't think anyone's ever turned it down internally. I can think of maybe a long time ago. Okay. Well before my time, but you know? yeah, I'm done. That was it. Sorry. I was thinking of how to build that spreadsheet. And um, when you are building the second station, say we get, say we're at that point where it's going in construction, is there any point in at that time talking about hiring or look, looking for staff early and then training them in the Zebra station as you yep, absolutely. Are buying equipment? Because yep. that takes a couple of years, doesn't yep. it? Or uh, it takes a while. Yeah. Yes. Long lead time. Yeah. yeah. So yes. I mean, you could could you be use it at the same station? Did it? Yeah. Yes. Before so like 10, the Wagner station actually. Absolutely. So, and so as an example here. So, so get that in the spreadsheet. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Are you in the spreadsheet? I don't know. Well, we'll work together. Yep. <laughs> Subcommittee. I, so I can give you the station that. stuff details and mm -hmm. kick it off to you guys. Yep. You can start that early. Well, it takes yeah. more than a year to build a building, and it takes a year to build an engine. Um, yeah. Right. It depends on how big an engine is. Yeah. So, 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 so if you're yeah. going on the one, you better get going on the other. Start on both the same time. I think I, I, I to keep the spreadsheet pretty simple. One. You don't want to overcomplicate it. Yep. You Which want it as an additive for each column as to what I'm getting for that additional millage. Yes, but you want your timeline to be shifted. I, I don't want us to be putting into the I don't want us to say this is what we're going to have year one, year two, year three, and put it into the uh, voters' hands to approve it that way. And then Not find out that you wanted to buy that engine when you're starting to build the building. I think you got to be careful how much detail you think. Exactly. So we don't it's, want to It's going to confuse people. The, the other thing is we talked earlier about a graduated oh. village. This is the kind of that's what, what, that's what, what, people, what people want to see, I think, yeah. is results over time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and we can show them that 2.6 or whatever got you X, Y, Z. Hey, now we're going to go up to 3.5. And everyone will say, okay, I saw the results of that. I'm willing to buy into that. Show me. You just might start a merit based mill project. What's that? Merit based. Oh, yeah. Okay. Merit based. Yeah. If you just say, give me four or five mills and the bill says start it tomorrow, no, that will work. Mm -hmm. You need to sell this. I, I think, to your point, though, earlier when you asked, we had to figure out what the combined military is where we get of the uh, operating uh, side of it plus the debt service or we need to figure out what, what the breakdown is there because obviously we also need to handle the debt service and we need to look into the existing general fund loan thing and see if we can somehow take care of that too because that is a net uh, cash outflow of the fire fund currently. Seventy-five thousand dollars, but if we can take care of it as part of this project, it would be ideal to just simplify everything for the fire department. And as part of this, is do you think it's appropriate, <clears throat> maybe not in the same sheet, a different sheet, to show what the common man or the, common, the homeowner is going to pay a, a year or a month? Yeah, as if we go from one point three five to three or five or six, yeah, okay. a year. I think a year for simplicity. The property. Hey, they the property owner. The property owner. Yeah, I, I think you also, even though you don't have to sell it necessarily to business owners per se, I think it is important for them to understand that this is a cost that's going to go up for them. Uh, because I already know my property taxes are going to be high. Uh, just how high? Uh, and that, that's true of people that are either building or in existing businesses now, but there's a lot of people that don't pay attention to what the township's necessarily doing because they're running a business and they have lots going on day to day. And if you can show somebody, hey, I'm paying, 
thousand dollars a year now is going to go up to twenty four hundred dollars a year. Rather than coming to the board and being angry when they get the property tax bill, mm-hmm. you can try to once again coming back to what uh, public comment said last week: educate people and mm-hmm. explain to them why this is a good idea. Yeah. Sure, show them what they're getting for their money. Yeah. Insurance bill. And that's something we can't. We don't know how to do it yet. We don't know how. And, there, and it's only a guess that the, that the insurance will go down. Yeah, and as you say, it's a leg. In, in all of your, uh, you know, in your slide deck, did you have a map at all that showed, okay, you know, these are sixes and these are threes and these are tens and these are ten W. Do you have a map on that? Yeah, the, the radius, that line map. There's only there's only like two or three areas where the ten northeast, right. south. East and southwest corners are 10. Yeah. Right? So the one up here is 10 W because it's got one of these two are just tens, right? Oh, this one's 10 W too, right? Because it's uh, yeah, uh, it's the five mile up, station up, thing, right? And then the one down in the southwest corner is there you go. So, uh, there you go. everything in yellow uh, is within five road miles of the station, everything in white is over five road miles. Correct. So, kind of, you know, and I and I tried to or try. I pulled some numbers together to try to help uh, see where most benefit would be gained um, in that southeast section. Uh, that's the is that your insert. Yep, yeah. that's the insert there. We've got about uh, it's about four hundred homes that are over five road miles from the station, and right down the middle is actually within. Five miles. It's the ones on either side. Correct. Side road, side ridge road. I think. This is road miles. Road, road miles. miles. Based on ISO. And then if we look here, the uh, the one on the left, the southwest section, we've got about twenty homes that are not within five road miles. And then the northeast section on the right, we got about fifty, uh, fifty to sixty that are uh, homes not within five road miles of the station. So about 500 in the Ann Arbor district and 20 in the Dexter school district, basically. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Does that, that answer your question? So I'm thinking, you know, I'm putting my, my analytical hat on here. I'm thinking based on this map um, and maybe you trying to find some um, rates you know, insurance rates for property, not liability, but just property, because liability is just another component of your overall insurance bill. Is you know how can we just have an average, work out an average rate, and then um, do a before and and, and after um, calculation? I mean, it, it it you know it's very subjective, but it's more than what I think we have now. It's, yeah, well, it, that would be well beyond my area of expertise. And I believe I've reached out to several insurance agencies. I have a friend who's an agent who I tried to get insights to talk about, and I've been st- I haven't been able to get that data. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've got one uh, one example, one anecdotal example. Example. Okay. That's a. Who does the township purchase insurance for? From from. Herman Flowers, the agent. Uh, I so, don't know that. So I wondered if there was a way to have the township ask their insurance supplier. I mean, I think any example would have to go through an underwriting process, right? I would think so. Yeah. Just thinking who would they have leverage on. Right? <clears throat> okay, so next week, are we going to meet next week? Are we all okay to meet next week? Next week, we want to have some way of describing or displaying current cost and service, future cost and benefits to add on. <clears throat> Based on option one, two, three, four. Yeah, one, two, three, four, right. I'm not sure how we can put that in, a, how we can put the benefits in a spreadsheet, but we can work on it. 
maybe it'll be a two column type thing. I, I don't know. We can work on it. Um, and then perhaps a separate sheet or on the same sheet, factor in the building, the dirt and the building cost to build. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to need to get down in the weeds on on the cost forecast piece of it. No, wait, that's for a third station. We already have the dirt for station two. Yeah, I, so then this the is third, yeah, the third station. This is thinking 15 years down the road. Right, right. And I'm almost thinking that that'd be a parallel. Almost thinking what? That it'd be a parallel. No, we have this millage and we're going to cover it with action. Or, you know, we're going to evaluate it for that was one, two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. And on the side, five years from now, we ought to be uh, either have purchased separately or plan on purchasing it separately. What, what I'm saying is I think that might be a, the third station ought to be a separate talk. I'm not separate talk. Not part of this recommendation. The, the, the bricks and mortar is, is a, a down the road mm -hmm. forecast. Yeah. Maybe the dirt, is a current it, discussion, but maybe five years. Yeah, and it might, but maybe should we add it into this or not? Well, I'm not we'll create a line item and, and we can okay. debate it. Yeah, that sounds good. So, your opinion of the I'd like to see a stable road property ever means? Okay. It almost meets my needs. Almost. My problem, I've got two problems with it. First of all, it's a half mile down a road before you get to Jackson. Is it that far? Yeah. Ballpark. Okay. A quarter mile to half mile. And problem two I have with it is um, it doesn't get that southwest section within five road miles. So we still have some. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. I kind of. Okay. Yeah, I did some measurements on Google with it. Okay. Well, here's the other thing. Something. That and that might be appropriate. That might be acceptable. But I'm wondering if, it, if in order to generate funds to buy other property, we sell that piece. I don't, know. I don't know where we got it from. I don't know who's donated. I, no, the township bought it before my time because there was a plan to put in a sewer, a water treatment plant. Mm -hmm. When the, the two boards, three boards ago, they were talking about going away from Ann Arbor and have Sio Township have its own water system. And I believe they bought that piece of property. I don't remember what it cost. Huh? Well, Charlie was the super Before Charlie. Before oh, Charlie. Okay. Maybe it was when Charlie was on board. Um, and I'm not sure if they had, if the previous board before Charlie had bought that piece and then, and then the 2004, 2008 board started thinking about using it. Or I, I, I don't remember. Yeah. Where is this located? The end of Stabler. We're Stabler tees into, yeah. or tees into 94. Yeah. Uh, north or of, south side of North. North of. Um, North of Jackson. Yeah. Close the year of the state. South yeah. of yeah. Okay. North, what's the place? Uh, There's a Kiwanis there. Kiwanis, north of Kiwanis. Yeah. Okay. Between Kiwanis and the highway. Yeah. Right. Kiwanis wanted to have kids work on that property. Go ahead. And, and that may not be an issue, right? Because, you know, that's 5.1 miles to Parker and Jackson. Sorry. Sorry. Or, yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, how many homes are are <laughs> okay? So it's an issue. It, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. Um, you know, we we lose some down Sio Church. He's groaning and grumbling about that. But it's it that, is a possibility, and it's free. <laughs> I agree. Huh? We own free -ish. it. Free-ish. We own it. Let's put it that way. You know, if we're a little farther west down Jackson for that chunk, we're now four miles. That gives us a lot more flexibility. Yep. Yep. There's a business guy who lives or has a business around there. Maybe get some property for you know. We <laughs> <laughs> might be able to make a trade. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do what what do we need to <laughs> somehow we need to put this into a, a three digit a three a three D spreadsheet. Three D spreadsheet. I guess let's, you and I and Andy and Lance. Let's. Yep. Let's huddle up and, and we'll figure something out. I've got that up there. We can you can sketch out what, what we want this to look like on that board. I'll take it back to the office and start trying to put it together. If that works. You know. okay. Plus four wouldn't be too many people, would it? I don't think so, Warren. No, because Jessica plus... I'm, I'm not a voting member, so... That's right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just, so, okay. did you so get a real pleasure? I mean, I heard somebody online. Did you get him attendance? 
Yeah, yes, uh, we have Mark Mitch here. Okay, good. Terry, let me know. I didn't hear what. Go ahead. Um, oh, we still need to go back to uh, approval of the minutes and public comment. <clears throat> oh, are we done? Uh, I don't know if we're done or not. We'll have to go back. Uh, uh, we're, okay, we're done with the discussion. The deliverable for next week is. Uh, Say again? The deliverable for next week is the, uh, the village forecast based on four options. Okay. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, sure. With a simple summary. Yeah. All right. And then uh, looking out for a week, you know, we're, we're ramping up to our last meeting on December 1, 2, 3, whatever, early December. Uh, do we have kind of an idea of what our deliverables will be over the next three weeks to get to our last week? Uh, and, and I think there was uh, in the Purpose. We had four per four issues: uh, service uh, improvement. Recommend uh, how long the service improvement plan. Estimate ongoing personnel costs and millage. So, have we? Can we cross any of these off, uh, or do we need a more formal paper, or do we accumulate all of our work papers into one document? How are we how are we getting to the I first think our, week of December? I think our deliverables. All this work product plays into one document. It seems to make sense. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we have all the numbers. There are different places, but I think we have all of that information. Okay. When this goes to the board of trustees, are they going to need to see all the background data, all the presentations, all this, all that? Are we accumulating all that we need into a folder? On well, here's the thing. I don't think we should do that at a normal at a <clears throat> at a uh, Tuesday night board meeting. I think we need to do that on a Saturday work session. Get them to uh, agree because it's a. It'll probably be a, it would be at least a two hour. Oh, well, thank you. What because what we what he what Chief did last week last week was at least an hour and a half. Yep. Yeah. This was and this is a con condensation of that, so we have to work this into that. So we probably talk at least an hour and a half presentation, okay. and then there's going to be questions. So I don't think we can do that on Tuesday night. And then the public needs to be well, of course, yeah. public. I mean, it would be here. It would be zoomable. They could sit here, but it would be. A non, not a regular meeting, a work session, and then forming a discussion. Yes. Well, yeah. I, I would say I'm not a board member, but I would presume that that's what that you want. To, that's what we would recommend. You need to go uh, potentially. Okay. Um, well, real quick, let's. I'm going to skip all this new business before you leave. If I come back and let the um, let the public. Comment. Did the public have any comments about their comments from last <laughs> meeting on the minutes? If they had a chance to read the minutes, do you have any changes to the minutes from last week? Okay. Thank you. Um, I will try to condense my comments. I've got scratches all over my document. Um, you guys are a perfect mix. Uh, for this meeting, can you please make yourself a monthly committee starting in January? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, one of the problems that I have understood over the, the last two plus years of, of listening to meetings is that this township is very poor at long-term planning, and, and that that is a problem. Um, we have, um, what have I got here? Um, uh, let's just get by method, um, especially with the fire station, and that has to stop. Um, I would, I, I really like going for the long term um, and educating residents for the long term. Um, I, I've watched being living here close to the fire station for thirty years. I've, I've kind of see it, seen it evolve. Um, and we've just gotten along too cheaply for too long. So I, I think residents will appreciate a, a firm plan that will help them in the, in the future. Um, Bob, to, Bob uh, hi to one of your comments about a park. Um, I don't know if everybody remembers that in downtown Am Ann Arbor near the courthouse for a while, they had a park that was called a little park for a little while. And um, <laughs> because they were going to use it for a purpose, but it took several years to get to that point. Um, so there's an idea for that. 
Um, I also witnessed a woman falling at CRC in the entryway and staff was not allowed to touch her. The daughter could not help her up. The woman could not get up on herself. Emergency had to be called. All we could do was make her comfortable while she angrily laid there. Um, and so this is this new mode that this town, this fire department is going to have to get into with um, elder uh, senior living coming into Sio Township. This is a, a big mindset switch um, in, in how our fire department is going to be uh, used going forward. Um, awesome presentation. I think I'll stop there. Thank you. And I can just add one comment to Pam's comment. Another cancer we need to excise from Sio Township is that's the way we always did it. Who's the next comment? Next is Rob Pattinson. Robbie, go ahead. You did have those. Didn't you have that as one of your uh, just as the operating? Yeah, yeah. They didn't have the capital. Right, no capital up front. Okay, just an ongoing separate. replacement. Next is Jillian. Jillian, you oh, good morning. Or uh, yeah, it is still good morning. <laughs> um, I came in a little bit late, so I may have missed some um, some of the discussion. Uh, so regarding this. You're, you're thinking of um, having this on the ballot for next year. Um, and this would be considered a special assessment under Public Act 33, if I remember correctly. Yes. Okay, so make sure that the language doesn't say millage because it, it, can, it, it, it works differently. Um, the other thing, I don't think, okay, well, I'm on the Road Advisory Committee. We have a meeting tonight. And one of the um, things that we're reviewing is the township-wide road SAD, which I really feel that the way, um, from my um, observation and studying, is that how it has been um, has not been done correctly. And for a specialist, or a millage provides a public benefit where a special assessment doesn't. That provides a benefit to the parcel that is being improved or has the improvement. So with that being said, we may have another millage for roads. Um, now, both of those, if you if we have both of those millages next year, they are the basic needs. You know, we need our roads, we need our fire um, department. So I don't think that's going to be an issue regarding selling it to the public because, you know, safety and roads are important. Um, the biggest issue that would prevent anything from passing is at our um in in our township you know our finance department we have one employee we need a finance director as everybody knows so i would um consider I and mean, of course you can do what you want but um if you if all of us could um pressure the board to get serious about our staff and our finance department i think that's that would really help um selling millages or sads um to the public because you know when when we're giving our money we want to make sure that it is um properly taken care of and i have to say i really enjoy listening to all of you i love how you're working together and you're very thoughtful not just of our fire department but the residents and our community thank you thanks jillian that's it that's it Okay, well, nobody commented on the minutes from, so I, yeah. unless there's objections, without objection, we'll approve the minutes from the last meeting. We don't have any old business. We don't have any new business on the agenda. We just had public comment. Move to adjourn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Good. Thank you, public. Very good. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, all. Recording stopped.